fully a glimpse of the man and told you a little bit about the Subhash Goshal Foundation and what they've been doing. But I now want you to listen to a man who has worked with Subhash Goshal a little more closely at HTA. Thank you, Sam, for enlightening us about the contribution of Subhash Koshal and the Subhash Koshal Foundation. We would now like to request Mr. Prabhakar Mundkar to share with us his experiences and <coughs> learning from Subhash Koshal. Now, just to tell you about Prabhakar Mundkar, Prabhakar is a veteran at person and now a profile <coughs> prolific commentator and writer. He spent 70 years with the agency once known as J. Walter Thompson, working with them across three continents. He had the good fortune to work with Mr. Subhash Goshal in the 80s when Mr. Goshal was CEO and director emeritus. He has also worked with Hawass and Haku Hodo. Until last year, Prabhakar was chief mentor with one of the Hinduja group companies and served on the advisory boards of digital companies and NGOs. Prabhakar has been voted top voice on LinkedIn, one of the top emerging voices in the yourstory.com and is a regular writer with the advertising trade media, having written more than 400 articles in the last four years. He was once an HMV and Polydor recording artist playing both guitar and piano and still joins the Apoidio Gate for friends. Mr. Prabhakar Mulkar, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Many speakers have spoken at this forum about Mr. Subhash Gosha and his many facets as a leader. I'm going to speak to you about a facet which I feel to be the most. So if I were to associate one big word with Mr. Gosha, that word is aesthetics. The language of beauty as we have known it since Aristotle. I don't think I would associate that word with too many CEOs globally. I follow all the CEOs, but there are two CEOs that I think I would associate the word with. One is Steve Jobs and the other is Elon Musk. Aesthetical sensibility, after all, and design thinking is the key to success of both Apple and Tesla. Musk, for example, believes that beauty is as important as the usefulness of products. And Mr. Goshal believed that advertising must work, but it must also be beautiful. Musk spends half a day every week in the Tesla design studio with his chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen. Some designers like to say that design is about problem solving, which is perhaps why a lot of organizations today are adopting it as a thinking tool. Well, designers do solve problems, but so does the roadside tire wala who fixes my puncture. So I personally think design is about more about cultural reinvention. The 13th century philosopher Thomas Aquinas said that beauty needs three qualities, integrity, harmony, and radiance. Integrity is the quality of standing out clearly from the background. Harmony is about how the parts relate to the whole, and radiance refers to the pleasure we feel when we experience it. Remember all the time, when I'm talking about Mr. Gosha, that we consider advertising as an art form in the 20th century. I believe it has been taken over by data scientists and engineers whose province is machines, algorithms, big data, and artificial intelligence. 
Sir Martin Saras said some years ago that Don Draper wouldn't recognize Hagland today, pitting Don's madmen against today's mathmen. So you may wonder why and how aesthetics is relevant to companies in the 21st century. Let me answer that by saying that I think the best management decisions are aesthetic decisions. They satisfy our deep intuitive sense of what is right, what is good, and what is beautiful. Mr. Ghoshal, for me, was the master of taste and endowed with plenty of what I'd like to call aesthetic intelligence. Every memo from him was like a piece of poetry to be savored. In fact, he made memo writing an art form in the company. I would spend a long time admiring his carefully crafted words. Our notice board at Ferocia Metta Road was on the way to the toilet, as it so happened. And that meant that everybody had to read whatever was on that notice board because you had to go there a few, at least a few times a day. So it was quite strategically placed. Often we would discuss his memos and then analyze them. And then we would try and decipher what was written between the lines. What is it that he might have meant but he didn't say? Uh, that was an occupation with all of us young executives at the agency. Mr. Ghoshal was an amazing speaker and a master of the English language. He would often stun the foreign visitors that came to India from JWT with his eloquence. But the most telling example of his sense of aesthetics was when I had the fortune to be supervised by him on a project for Unilever, an account I finally handled for 17 years across three continents. So, Levers was launching a brand of fertilizer called Paras in the mid 80s. And uh, I was chosen to make a presentation to Levers and the very top brass. So, there was this man called Suman Sinha, who was later CEO of Pepsi, but who was on the board of Unilever, and of course, the great Srinu Sen. Now, both men could make you nervous with just their enormous stature in Unilever. I would see nervous brand managers standing outside Suman Sinha's door, wondering if they should knock or should they should just go away. So, Mr. Goshal was requested to attend this very important meeting, given the heavy weights from the Unilever side. I made a great presentation, or oh, that's what my Khanna tells me. But I was admonished, first of all, for pronouncing Paras wrongly. It was not Paras, but Parosh, Mr. Goshal and Chunu together, almost in unison, said. I had no choice but to admit my experience of West Bengal is playing in a band in drink cars. You know, so I wouldn't argue. And then came the telling blow of the meeting. Chunu didn't like the Paras logo. He liked the advertising, but didn't like the logo. And neither did Mr. Goshal, unfortunately. And we left the meeting with Mr. Goshal promising that he would personally supervise the logo. Actually, I, mean, I have to be honest, I was horrified. So, on this project, I would then be exposed both to his sense of aesthetics and his pursuit of perfection. I can't help feeling that these two go together. Coming back to Palace, I was made to redo the logo more than 15 times, as far as I can remember. Maybe it's, maybe it's many more times. Both Sudeep Devkar, our chief art director, and I were at our wit's end. We just didn't know what to do, because whatever we took to him got rejected. And he said, you know, you Bombay people from Maharashtra, I know you don't understand Bengali fonts and type typography. No, so it was a bit of a challenge. So then one day I decided to go to a billing office which was located on Homi Modi Street. And I decided that I'll raid that office and get all the Bengali magazines and newspapers and study them. <coughs> so I came back to Lakshmi building with Anand Bazaar, Vartama, De, Shanan Nela, you name it. And the heat, as I remember, it was this big. 
after comparing our work with the fonts used both in the editorial. So I looked at editorial separately and I looked at advertising set separately. And for a week I studied all these magazines and I thought I had an understanding of what Mr. Goshal was saying. So with renewed vigor and energy, I went to his office with our latest renditions of the Paris logo. Again, he was not happy. Now I kept this heap. Uh, he had a secretary in Mumbai called Lakshmi Kanathur. And I said, Lakshmi, I will be coming out of this meeting, really excusing myself with Mr. Goshal for a minute, and I need to take this heap quickly inside because you know I want to show him. So she kept it in a very strategic place where I could access it immediately. So I excused myself. I said, can you give me a minute, sir? And I walked out and came back with the magazines. And then with my newfound knowledge of Bengali typography, I started talking to him and saying, you know, I've looked at all this. So he said, uh, all he said was, you're a clever man, he said. Go ahead, but I'm still not happy. So I somehow managed to solve the problem, but it didn't feel like I'd won the battle. But I learned from this project that the struggle for perfection always comes with a great deal of pain. And uh, I think that was my first lesson. For me, most aesthetically minded people are also visionaries. For example, Mr. Ghoshal wrote one of the first primers on succession planning a word that has become more popular now in the new millennium. Remember, Mr. Ghoshal retired on May 9th, 1985, and he had already done a small little thesis on succession planning. When I see many large Indian CEOs refusing to retire until 70, while paying lip, lip service to the idea of succession planning, I often think of Mr. Ghoshal. So I want to take you quickly through what he said on succession planning. The Goshal corporate strategy on succession planning ran thus. You must be absolutely sure you are ready to quit and will permit yourself no second thoughts. We've seen a lot of recent examples where well, most of the time people are not ready to quit. And secondly, they always have some second thoughts. You do not harbor the wish that you may be replaced by a clone that was his big second point. You are not making hidden provisions for your return just in case things change. Uh, I see lots of examples of that uh, with big Indian companies. And then he said, you do not wish to act as great eminence nor a benign sage. Although he himself may never have wanted it, Mr. Goshal was in fact a benign sage for all of us. And he was deified at Hindustan Thompson Associates, the company as it was known then. Which is why we're all sitting here today at the Subhash Ghoshal lecture in his memory. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the evening.